say thank you. Good evening once again. So grateful, so grateful to God that he's kept me, he's kept you, and has allowed us to come back here uh, to share another thought uh, that is full of a sense of gratitude on this Tuesday. My prayer is that uh, prior to this experience that your thoughts have been pretty good. Um, that, you know, we always say whatever things are true, just, lovely, comely, if they've been any noble cause of anything praiseworthy, think on these things. And the goal is to keep you in a perpetual state um, of positivity in the midst of everything that's going on around us. On this Thoughtful Tuesday, again, we uh, ask that you share any prayer requests, praise reports, uh, prayer concerns that you're able to type them in now um, as well. And we thank you for those that you have shared, um, that you inboxed us, that you shared um, through Facebook, uh, some of your praise reports, as well as your prayer concerns. We know that prayer is the key to the kingdom and faith unlocks the door. Uh, the scripture says that if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. So as we go to God in prayer, won't you join us virtually and spiritually? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Now, as we come before you to share um, a word uh, that will bring light uh, to someone's darkness, um, that will be encouragement to someone's depression, uh, that will bring clarity to someone's confusion, um, that will bring hope to somebody's despair, um, that will bring a sense of joy uh, to someone's sadness. Lord, allow those things to happen for us in ways in which we never thought could be. And Lord, don't just allow it to happen, allow it to stay with us, that we can forever feel your presence, even when the world feels like uh, it has forsaken us. Now, as we share this thought, on this wonderful Tuesday evening. Thank you for allowing us to be healthy and wealthy. Thank you for allowing us to be alive. Thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity to, uh, to share your love with others, um, both far and near, regardless of background, creed, color, nationality, preference. Lord, we thank you that we're all your creation and these thoughts will be able uh, to have influence on the lives and loves of those who are watching. Now, Lord, allow this word uh, to expand uh, in such a way um, that it will grow as a seed uh, in the lives and souls of people who are watching. Bless us, strengthen us, and keep us. In Jesus' name, we all said amen, amen, and amen. Tonight, we're going to look at Job. Job chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. Job says these words, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. Oh, how my heart yearns within me. Tonight I wanna to talk about a, a problematic perspective. A problematic perspective in the course of all that we've been dealing with in the past year and a half, um, we see now that there are competing perspectives, even on the way in which um, news is presented um, right before our eyes, uh, that three, four, five people can see the same thing and yet provide a perspective that would almost at times make you feel as though that you didn't believe what you had seen. And so it is important that for us to understand that our perspectives are colored by who we are and the attitudes that we have. And as we deal with the familiar passage of scripture and the familiar story of Job, we know uh, that Job was a righteous man, as the word says. We know that Job had not gone out and done anything wrong. And yet in the midst of all uh, that transpired and happened to him, the calamity that came upon his life um, was almost uh, simply brought forth 
uh, because of his righteousness, because of him being a good person, kind person, um, family gone, livelihood gone, uh, spouse uh, began to be in a non-supportive mode, uh, friends uh, sat down and began to criticize, uh, saying that there were things uh, that he had possibly done even before childhood uh, that caused these things to take place. And yet, in the midst of all of the destructive forces that just did not attempt to take his life or his family, it took his children, it took his life. It had taken all of these things. It was just horrible. Horrible situation, and how many of us, we look at um, things that are going on with um, uh, racial profiling, we look uh, at uh, child abductions, we look at all of the violence uh, that is taking place um, through guns and mass shootings um, in our area and across the nation, and the victims are individuals um, uh, who uh, live joyful, fruitful, uh, lives, uh, individuals who were um, supporters of family and friends, uh, people in society who had not um, raised a finger to anyone, and yet it was felt though that they were unjustly taken or they become maimed or uh, they have had to suffer uh, some type of injustice. And it appears as though that there was nothing in their lives that justifies what is taking place. And therefore, our perspectives can be skewed. Uh, for lack of a better word, our perspectives end up getting jacked up because our attitudes can be messed up about the things that we've experienced and we've encountered. And in society and what we're currently dealing with, it can make us bitter instead of better. Um, it can make us vengeful instead of prayerful. Um, it can make us uh, hurt others in the midst of our own hurting. And so when you have a problematic perspective, you really have a problem because everything that you see, you see it from the lens of hurt, bitterness, anguish, anger, sadness, and sorrow. And so Job, with his life and all of the things that transpired with him, how was he able to get to a place in his mind and in his heart where he was able to say that I know that my Redeemer liveth uh, and I know, you know, that I shall stand before him. And he says, um, just as plain as day, he says, and I shall see God and I shall see him in my flesh. That after, for many of us, um, we are no longer a part of uh, religious faiths or, or spiritual denominations because of the things that have happened to us uh, that have been devastating. And we've not been at a place to be able to forgive. And if we've had forgiven, we don't want to be a part of that uh, entity any longer. And so how would one uh, that has had a Job experience get to a point where you're still able to trust God, even in the midst of you feeling as though that God has taken everything that you've loved or that you've appreciated or he's allowed some things to happen and to take place. Well, some of the things that uh, John Maxwell shares in his Maxwell Leadership Bible, uh, three different uh, points. Number one, that in getting uh, to that place where you are acceptive, um, that your past must be released. See, for many of us, um, we can't deal with the present because we're still living in the past. We're still living in that past hurt. We're still living in that past pain. We're still living in that uh, past guilt. Um, the past relationship has been over. Uh, for weeks, months, or years, and yet that pain is just as fresh today as it was all those years ago. That we must get to a place, and again, and this is above and beyond faith, and beyond religious practice, all of us that are listening, get to a place where you release your past. Get to that mindset where your past is released and only you can do that. 
Stop reliving and rewinding um, that film and that rerun over and over and over again. You can't make a new past uh, because you're still dealing with the old. Your present is gone. Your future is non-existent. Your past must be released. And it's more than just saying, let it go. You've got to work through that. And you've got to remind yourself, I'm not even the person I was 10 months ago, 10 years ago, 10 days ago, that I'm in a different space in my own life now. Now, as you let your past go, release it. Release those thoughts, release those memories, begin to release it. And yes, you know, there'll be times when things will trigger a, a memory or a thought, but you'll be stronger to deal with it when you first let it go. Number two, your purpose must be remembered. That you are not the sum total of what has happened to you in the past. Uh, that your past does not dictate your purpose. That if you are in the present, there's still a reason and a season uh, that you're here. Whether it's um, to love on those uh, that are in your household or whether there is love that is to come. There is a purpose that you must live out and live on instead of rekindling um, a fire that has already gone out. And importantly, your praise must be renewed. You have to begin to thank God for the little things that are taking place in your life. Yes, you were hurt from uh, the past, but today was a good day. Um, yet, uh, nobody talked about me today. I, nobody got on my nerves today. I, I don't need to keep reliving what has taken place in the past. My praise must be renewed. I must be thankful for what is going on today. What am I thankful for um, today? I, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm, I'm in my right mind. I'm thankful that I was had an opportunity um, to be able to do some things for myself. I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to clothe myself. I'm thankful um, of the family that I still have left here. I, I, I miss those loved ones that have gone on, but I sure enough appreciate the ones that are still here. Take a moment and opportunity um, to focus in on what is at hand and what is at present. And when you release your past and when you remember your purpose and when you renew your praise, your problematic perspective will begin to change. That you will see things from a different lens. It's the same thing, but now you got an attitude of gratitude and your perspective has changed. Many times God won't change the situation. What he's really trying to do is change you. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. And I'm asking you today to become the head of my life. Please forgive me from all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me. And three days later, you were raised from the grave. And because I believe today, I am saved. Now, Lord, please fill me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, type in, I'm saved. Blessings to you. Now. Let's share in this perspective the sights and sounds of St. John of the Mighty Fortress. Uh, now, let us go forth and share uh, in the 3 team ministry, which all of you have been so wonderfully committed to. That is the time, the talent, and the time. And we thank you for that. Of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress. There are several ways to give to support the ministries of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, your time, talent, and tithe. We've made virtual giving so easy. 
Just text St. John SAV to 73256 and follow the prompts. That's St. John SAV 73256 and follow the prompts. Or you can call the number right on your screen to speak to someone and give your credit card information. 912-844-1872. That's 912-844-1872 or feel free to mail in your cash, donations, and tithes to St. John Baptist Church, The Mighty Fortress, 2415 East Duran Avenue, Savannah, Georgia, 31406. And to give your time and talent or to find out more information on everything going on at St. John, The Mighty Fortress, including our virtual worship experiences, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Periscope, or go to stjohnsavannah.org. Ah. Again, blessings to you and thank you for your uh, time, talent, and tithe as the Mighty Fortress is uh, still rolling on. Continue uh, to share in the Mighty Fortress moments every morning. Uh, it's mighty and it's just a moment of uh, being able to share a thought to get you a long last way. Thank you for your commitment here uh, on Thoughtful Tuesdays as well as joining us for Morning Manor every Sunday. Um, grateful to God. And of course, um, you download the iHeart app and you can listen to iHeart Radio and WSOK for the traditional ro radio broadcast of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30. And uh, yes, we're still driving in, walking in, rolling in. And sometimes we even have to crawl in to drive in worship service, um, socially distanced, um, keeping your health in mind. 2415 East Darren Avenue, the soul of Savannah, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Grateful to God that he has allowed us for uh, now going on a year and a half of worshiping um, in the beauty of his creation on the beautiful campus of St. John the Mighty Fortress. So until you come back, uh, we come back for another Thoughtful Tuesday. Uh, remember, uh, in the words of Job, as he said, his perspective was the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Until we meet again, God's blessing. Oh, we are the praise today because you are worthy. We lift our hands to say thank you.